Pause, pause a sec there, Mark. One second. Um, so we got Milton from Grenada. Are oh, we okay yeah. to, to, to let him in now? Pause. Of I just course. wanted to pause there because it's a natural pause. And then I came, we're going to go right to you to, to, to look at the same point. <clears throat> there he is. Hi. Good day. Hi, Good Milton. Day. Welcome. Welcome, Milton. You. Um, you joined us at a great point. We are talking about tourism and, and how it's been really hit quite hard so far during this COVID-19 season. And Akeem was just going to tell us a bit about what, how is Grosilea going to come back on as being an attractive place for people in the future? <laughs> um, true. I mean, I think I'm going to go high level first. I'm, just, go. I'm not an anarchist nice. in any way. And I, I don't want to seem as if I want to destroy things and then sort of rebuild it. But I think because of COVID-19, it really does expose a number of the islands in terms of what they do with tourism. So, I mean, yeah. we need to really rethink what globalization has done to the region, I think is absolutely necessary. And a lot of what you've just said before, everybody here is like, we need to really take into to consideration our ability to be self-determinative, how we sustain our economies, how self-sufficient are we, and what it really means to live happily and freely and away from violence. So that's mm -hmm. sort of the high level of it. But I mean, if we really want to be serious around tourism, if we ask questions around why are we doing tourism, which is probably 50 to 60% of any economy, and at the same time complain about climate change, when climate change is pretty much being pushed by two major sectors that pollute the economy. One is extractive and the other yeah. one is transportation. Yeah, so if the Caribbean yeah. is serious about climate change affecting us, why are we pushing an industry which is reliant on transportation that is destroying the climate and that's what we're reliant on so i don't think we're serious around what our economies in the caribbean mm. really need to do mm. i think agriculture should be a part in it but it's wider and bigger than that across the region so for st lucia specifically the opposition in the current government when you sit and you talk and you hear them coming about now it's now these two sectors only are being the communication right which is tourism and now agriculture. There's no conversation around a number of other sectors. And it's not to say one or another, but I think if we're looking at economies, we really need to, as Naz was saying, like if we're focusing on one island, specifying in food security or not, it may have to be the same thing around what an island might be able to produce. Let's be honest, Jamaica pumps a certain amount of money in sports and gets the best athletes. So, I mean, a conversation around, like, what is the Caribbean trying to do? How do we get to being happy? And what are we reliant on, I think, is important. The sad part, too, I mean, in St. Lucia, as an, ex uh, as an example, or the OECS, we've been reliant on tourism, but we've been very reliant on selling our citizenship. And that yes. has been another thing, project yes. in various ways. So yeah, some have been point. successful, some have not been. But mm. like, what are we engaging in in the region has to be discussed because after 9-11, there was a certain type of um, conversation and economy that took place. And tourism was one, financial mm -hmm. services, people hiding their money in tax havens, citizenship being sold. I don't doubt we may have this call in like another five years. Yeah. And it's going to be a totally different conversation around like what type of economies are we going to build? Are we going to build surveillance economies? What are we relying on? I love digital and I don't want to be like suspect, but you know, the surveillance economy of being able to go online and sell products and services mm -hmm. that we can't even benefit from at the end as the end user is something mm -hmm. that I, I think as a high level, I think we need to really think about how and when tourism is going to happen, as I said earlier, St. Lucia, we're going to be up and running from the 1st of June. Whether yeah. we get international flights or not, yeah. we're going to be welcoming tourism um, and tourists. So you can fly to St. Lucia, you'll be welcome at the airport, and you're going to be taken in a car, They'll be you'll be tested, and you can stay at the hotel. They've uh, released the protocols of how if Naz wants to visit me in St. Lucia, we probably can't see each other, uh, but she can visit um, and come to St. Lucia, enjoy the beach, and they're going to, uh, they're creating what is now being called isolation tourism. Right. Um, so, I mean, to if you would bring some lava for me, sure. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> hey, I have a bunch of friends who returned um, cruise ship workers, and I, I feel like I have a, a, a delivery service. So, you know, they've been asking me to bring like pigtail booyo. They want this and, and pay lao, and I've, I've had to bring um, food to my friends. So, I mean, hmm. 
just on a side note, I mean, I don't think I have the solutions of how to reopen the economy, but I think by the end of June going into July, if cases are not increasing and we're not seeing the spikes, I don't doubt that our economies are going yeah. to go back to a smaller regional sort of more localized reopening. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you will see, but I, yeah. Yeah, you were also talking about, you know, when I listened to what you were saying, you were talking about also mainly about a harmonized strategy for the region. And mm-hmm. hopefully the experience and the exposure of our vulnerabilities due to COVID-19 and coronavirus might actually get us thinking in that way. How can we, as a region, a complete region, mm-hmm. not just the OECS or Jamaican in North or Trinidad or Barbados individually, but as a mm-hmm. region, CARICOM, um, English-speaking Caribbean, you can bring in some of the others as well. Um, but how do we get there? Um, and, mm-hmm. and Milton, glad to have you join us as well, because I know you, you, mm-hmm. you may have some, some thoughts on this as well. As a region, how do you th- what are some of the things you think we should be thinking about? I know, um, I came, you mentioned a few are moving away from tourism, but what, any thoughts on that, uh, Milton? Yes, well, I'm glad to be with you this afternoon. Thanks for accepting me inside your living room. Oh, it's a pleasure <laughs> no. with, your, with your, your guys. Great to have um, you. CARICOM's approach has been to, in fact, your prime, prime minister in St. Lucia um, is heading a, a, a CARICOM subcommittee that looks mm-hmm. at the whole restructuring of uh, re-emergence, as it were, of tourism. So basically, what you find happening in St. Lucia will also, also happen in Grenada. Of mm-hmm. course, tweak mm-hmm. to our own specifications. Um, so that is, the, that is an, an approach I think um, is necessary because, you know, this situation really has exposed us or, or exposed us in so many ways. We just, it, it has exposed our um, lack of sincerity um, yeah. in just, um, we, we talk a lot, we talk a lot, um, but this has shown where we do need to work together as a people to ensure the things that we need to, to um, access. Yeah. So um, look, looking at it from a regional stand, standpoint, I think a deeper delve, dive into unity process, genuine unity, where you in Antigua, we, uh, because we have similar issues, we work together with you, more hands, more heads, more, more, more opportunities to look at, 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 at options um, and, mm-hmm. there, and there we can find the, the best. So in short, I would say um, we definitely need to, to act, more time to act so, so that we can avoid what has happened um, because of, of this crisis mm-hmm. uh, in going forward. Mm-hmm. I was just going to throw in a, another question there. You know, I like to talk oh. about education quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm wondering, do you think there could be a need for our education curriculums in the Caribbean to be revised a bit, to be a yes. bit more Caribbean centric? If I think of, I mean, it was a long time ago that I went to school. Right. <laughs> Don't let but, it look for you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, but honestly, you know, there, there's so much that we didn't learn about the rest of the uh, Caribbean. We might have done a little bit of Caribbean history so and so on, but just learning about the region and understanding the dynamics of the region, mm. there wasn't a lot of that. Do you think this is a good opportunity to, to change that as well? Philip, I will, I, I, let me answer this first, right? Because <laughs> I actually live this, so, and I will okay. tell you why I say this. Obviously, when you look at me, you see the hijab, right? Um, I'm of East Indian descent, born and grew up in Trinidad. Six generations of us have all been born and grew up in Trinidad. Yeah. Um, the, the thing about it is when I moved, when I first started to come here to Antigua and when I moved, going mm. about here in Antigua, people see me and they think that I'm from India or that I'm from Pakistan, Pakistan. because yeah. there's a medical yeah. university here in Antigua. And a lot of these students are either first generation or second generation Indian Americans or mm. Pakistani Americans or first Pakistani and Indian Canadians. Yeah. So sometimes like if I would go on tour or I go home to Trinidad and I come back, if I take a taxi from the airport to the office or to home, 
the taxi drivers would be like, oh, I didn't realize school starts in Bach now. And I'm like, dude, I see you all every time I come through the airport here. And it's the same... Is he I same? didn't know where you were going with this, but okay. Yeah. But okay. <laughs> is, he same, is he same thing? Oh they my. ask me all the time. I didn't realize school start back yet. Or um, is it that you have exams and you come back? And I'm like, I see you all. I could probably name some of you all. And we have this conversation every time. Hmm. How many times must I say that I'm from Trinidad? Right? Yeah, and the thing about it is, like, even if I go to the supermarkets or stuff like that, and when people hear me talk, when people hear me talk and they'll be like, you have a Trinidadian accent? And I'm like, so what <laughs> accent am I supposed to have? Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm very curious because in, in Barbados, I think the majority of times you see someone of, of East Indian descent, you would assume they're Trinidadian. Yeah, exactly. And you all have yeah. Bajan Indians because I have Bajan yeah. friends who are Indians and there's yeah, a pure right. Bajan accent that they come with. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, you know, so I'm like... And even like little kids, you would see little kids here in Antigua staring at me because of my hijab. And it's something that I don't know, maybe it's because Trinidad is such a cosmopolitan place because we mm. have a little bit of everything mm -hmm. that I grew up seeing white, black, Chinese, Syrian, Lebanese, mm -hmm. whoever it is. Mm. And, you know, I went to school with most of them because you know, in primary school, secondary school, university. And maybe it's just me that I try to learn about different cultures and different islands and whatever it is. So yeah. for me, like I would like I would know, okay, in Antigua is predominantly um a black population with a small white population. Mm -hmm. And it's local white, it's not to say that is, you know, only expats or whatever it is. Yeah. But the thing about it is I make myself learn about these things. In school you learn about these things. Hmm. But when you look at the other islands and sometimes you'd be like, what are they teaching in school? How hmm. wide is their curriculum? Because I mean, CXC should be the same thing across the board in the region. Yeah. But as you say, I think sometimes they tailor it to the specific country that they're teaching it in. And I mm. think it's something that needs to change yeah. that you have. Yeah. When you say Caribbean history, you don't venture off and be like, okay, well, we just look at um, slavery or indentureship or something like that. Uh, 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 Caribs. Exactly. The name of the Pinta and the Santa Maria. <laughs> exactly. How relevant is that in the society that we live exactly. in? I mean, like, yeah. you're going to go down to St. John's really? and somebody uh, be like, no, 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 I disagree with you all on that one, though. I think, Why? I mean... Well, I well, I don't know how. I, I mean, I could say the same thing, like how relevant is calculus for me now. But I, I, I don't, I, I don't know what the curriculum is with CXC um, mm -hmm. at the moment. I don't know what they're, what you know, people, students are learning through, like, like let's say secondary school. Mm -hmm. um, but from my experience, um, like having you know the books that I read and what I was taught was of value. I think I, I don't know, I, I don't know if maybe what people don't have is sort of the empathy or the understanding that there are others or there are other cultures rather than, I mean, you can give anybody, you can give them the best education around what's in the Caribbean. They'll still discriminate against somebody who's wearing a hijab if they're not able to relate. So I don't think people have that empathy or yeah. cultural diversity or traveling. Like I think some of, we're privileged to be able to do this, but the vast yeah. majority of people, Aren't, aren't doing Zoom calls or aren't interacting with people like us who are from different places. And I think that's probably the challenge that we have. So mm. a solution for it, because I'm always breaking things down, let me try to build it, might be if we had a better regional ability to travel that was cheap. Mm. The people who any and everybody could travel and go, but only those who can richly <clears throat> afford 200 US to go to 10 minutes away to, as you mm. said, Naz, to St. Kitts. Yeah. So if we can travel a lot more or interact with people, I think youth might be better exposed yeah. to yeah. it. But I, I, I mean, I don't know what, what, what books or, or, or novels or literature is being taught in school yeah. at the moment. But I think our deficiency is 
our ability to interact with each other, mm -hmm. to yeah. not look at Nas and just immediately yeah. think, okay, school open. And like, I really didn't even, I didn't know where you were going with this. And then like, when you explain, I'm like, ah, yeah. oh, right. This is what people do, like, but, because they don't To be honest, know. I was having, I was having similar better. thoughts as you when I went down the education mm -hmm. lines. It's really about interaction mm -hmm. and being able to move around the Caribbean. And not mm -hmm. just having um, school trips to Disneyland, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I appreciated learning about Columbus, whether I immediately <laughs> had a gut feeling <laughs> of whether it's true or not, or actually valuing like Shakespeare. I don't, do they teach Shakespeare in school still? Yes, for I'm literature. Sure do. Yeah. Literature. Some yeah. of his books are still on the curriculum. That's but good. I think ed or education. Is <laughs> education and learning about each other is, is is very important i think because you know i think it was um rex netherford who said and i paraphrase a bit you know how do you know where you're going unless you know where you came from mm -hmm. and i think sometimes as a region we still scratch the surface that collectively we came on the same journey mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and i think when we understand that and understand the interconnectivities of the different islands that then the innovations and conversations like this would actually happen a bit more to say, how do we integrate more together? How do we together strategize how we move forward and how we develop? How do we ensure food security whether it, and digital um, development as well? Commerce, that kind of stuff together as opposed to individually. And I think that's where education is really important. And as well, of course, how do we make sure that we actually get to interact with each other more despite being across waters? A, a quick thing, just a quick thing I want to say, I mean, on, on, on this note of like, uh, we're knowing where we, we come from. I, I was doing some research on like history in the Caribbean and trying to see where I could get specific documents that are legal based in terms of contracts during slavery. It's not in the Caribbean. The largest um, repository of these sort of information and documents is in mm. Spain. So even our history is not even here. Some yeah. of the largest research projects or anything or uh, 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 research projects or publications actually haven't even started in the region. We're still yeah. getting to do it. So I agree with what you were saying. Sorry. So we, and we have to be very careful with that as well because I, I bet you right now as we are here chatting about and even thinking about and as Milton said we talk we talk a lot as we're thinking about the, the future of the Caribbean yeah. after COVID mm -hmm. post COVID I bet there are people mm -hmm. in the US in already the UK, in Europe also thinking about the Caribbean and looking yes. at ways that mm -hmm. they can make money from our yes. governments by coming as oh, consultants yes. oh, abs 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 absolutely yeah. and mm -hmm. I think the, the point was raised by yourself Milton I, I took note of something that you said that I think we could explore here actually a, a deeper dive into genuine unity and I, I think the way, the way that you phrase that is very, very interesting because I think at heart, Caribbean people um, desire for, for unity. But do you think that there's an issue around politics that can kind of obstruct this genuine unity from happening? Yes, and I think um, our political leaders, the politicians, um, light that fire, um, mm. create that, create that um, by, the, by, the, by the divisive approach, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, but I, I, I think that for us to overcome, whether it is in the tourism sector, whether it's in the education sector, whether it's in the construction sector, for mm -hmm. us to overcome, we have to come face to face with the fact that we are one, we, sh we need to work together as one, and unity has to be mm -hmm. not just a word, but a yeah. reality. Um, yeah. We have mm -hmm. to do it. Um, we have to come to the place where we put aside our differences. We'll, there'll always be differences. Mm, there'll yeah. always be. Um, and that is where the strength comes, yeah. comes in. When we, despite our differences of opinions, of approaches, whatever it is, despite our differences, we can still yeah. navigate and work mm -hmm. as a united body. Mm. No, so it's a very, very interesting point because I always say to Andre and Philip when we are talking politics here in the UK, how... Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we admire the, the, the select committee approach here in the UK where irrespective of which party is in power, you know, there might be certain things that have started in one government that will just carry on in another. Uh, we so, have this cycle of restarting <laughs> every government in the Caribbean. And it, it, just, oh, does, yeah. it just does not work because mm -hmm. it stifles creativity, it stops growth, 
and you never seem to be progressing and, and getting any further down the line. So the, the, the point you're making about genuine unity, I do wonder whether there is a political angle and dimension to this that has really caused us a lot, not just in COVID-19, but over the history of our people. Mm. Akin? Um, I think, touching on what Milton was saying, I think there are certain things that unite us in the Caribbean. I'm not a religious sports person, but I'll fight for tooth and nail and march for somebody's ability to have their right to religion. Um, so I think religion pulls us together in the Caribbean. So I think we need to unite to be able to keep those conversations. I think sports does that really well, if you know this with cricket mm -hmm. um, and other mm -hmm. sports in the region, track and field. So uniting around those issues. The other one is the creative industries. I think yeah. once you start going outside of those areas, you get into the political realm and it fractures okay. and everybody goes their separate ways. So I think if we as a region can bring people around those sort of spiritual sports activity and other things and then let some political decisions be made, then perhaps let's see where it goes. On the other issue, which you've just brought up, um, I think accountability and transparency is not alive in the region, wow. at, least, mm -hmm. uh, at least not everywhere. I'll speak True. to St. Lucia specifically. Um, and we go through just what you've said. One government comes in, they take a project, they rename it, they throw it out, and it goes through this sort of rebirthing cycle that it never gets its true ability to form roots and then branches and then leaves and fruit. Yeah. So yeah. we're always losing things. And I don't think there's any accountability or transparency in relation yeah. to the mismanagement of government and, being, and, and, and holding politicians accountable. I yeah. am, and I'll go on quote to say, it, I think they should be brought to trial. You know, I didn't mismanage the economy. I mm. voted for v various politicians to be in power. And most of them sometimes have embezzled or engaged in very nefarious activities that have jeopardized economies. Um, and I think some, it, it, there should be a mechanism or an oversight way across the region to be able to look at that. I mean, mm. St. Lucia, um, as an example, we sell our, our citizenship um, part of the citizenship and investment program, we've actually gone on sale. So we have what is called um, the ability to do this and sell your passport or citizenship for a government bond. Our <laughs> current regime pre-COVID was 500,000 US. So I, uh, you give 500,000 US right now, you get a passport. And in five years when the bond matures, you would get your full money back and you walk away with a passport, basically free. Wow. Um, that, that doesn't <laughs> sound in any way. Where's the benefit? That doesn't sound in any way. To right. the country, there's no benefit. But then for the person who has $500,000 to put down, they get a passport and their money back after five years. But not, not just for, the person, for, for that person and their family and their legacy. Because and each that... one, each one would get a. They would buy it exactly. for it, and then they can apply for their. Um, yeah. So wow. exactly, and but we've gone on sale as of two days ago. The prime minister has announced that uh, until the end of December, we're doing a, a, a sale, and it's now two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So I mean, well, Antigua is a hundred thousand. <laughs> What? A <laughs> hundred thousand or one hundred and fifty thousand? After Irma happened in twenty seventeen, they wow. reduced theirs from two hundred and fifty thousand. I think it was to one hundred and fifty thousand or one hundred thousand dollars. I gotta admit, no, I've never no, heard no. about this across you. I've never heard about no, this no, policy. But, but, <laughs> to, no, be but, no, to sidetrack, Nas, I mean, we all have the same sort of regimes. This one, because um, we have the hundred thousand dollar one too, because they invest in property, real estate. And it stays. So uh, they build a house or they buy a house. So that stays. The bond one is new. This is, okay. I give you $250,000. You do whatever you want with the St. Lucia. I get a passport. And in five years, I get my money back. Could you imagine going to university and saying, Yui, I'm going to give pay for all my school fees up front. I'm going to go through the school, graduate, get my mm. certificate. At the end, the university says, you know what? We'll give you back your money. Wow. What is this? Mm. So this is what we're doing. <laughs> as if the university was able to invest that money. And First of you, we will never think money. about doing that because <laughs> you, we just take forever to give you back I, your money, but they're quick to take money from you. Yeah. <laughs> but Milton, you wanted to come in there. Then, yes, yeah. um, I think the issue being raised there about the state of Caribbean governments and people mm -hmm. in regards to mm -hmm. the whole issue, the, 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 the whole issue of our identity. Um, mm -hmm. It's a serious one. When you can be engaged in the practice and the habit of selling your citizenship, 
in Grenada here, Patrimony, we have yeah. a program called Citizenship by Investment, CBI. And mm -hmm. that has been a controversial issue. Um, and so several regional governments um, seem to be understanding that this is a, a lane where you can make some fast money um, mm. going down that route. Um, citizenship by in investment. You know, I've, I'm part of, 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 of uh, efforts to see how we can understand what is the meaning of citizenship. So you're saying because you have money, you are entitled to the same things I'm, I'm entitled to. Um, and, to know, vote, uh, and to vote. To vote. They and to can, vote. You can, and to uh, influence. Service. You know, yeah. so yeah. this is an issue that, um, that I'm saying. If yeah. we all in the region would unite mm. and do it right, you know, yeah. and, and, yeah. and so that we could avoid these things, not only in one island, but in the, in the region. Because what happens in our islands, it spills over. Mm. It, spill, it spills over. So um, the issue in Antigua, you know, how much? 100,000. Um, the issue in St. Lucia, thousands, hundreds of thousands. Um, Grenada, you might pay 500,000. And um, each child might pay 250000 you know? And, but I'm saying that this seems to be an avenue, a lane, where they can make mm. some quick buck. Instead of, instead of building agriculture, mm. building these areas that are sustainable. Now, look, mm. this thing happened. How sustainable is this program? People have to account. <laughs> you can't do, any, you can't do, not do anything. So mm. I, I'm saying that, yes, yes, I, my brother in St. Lucia, I feel your pain. I understand. <laughs> telling, uh, our but, <laughs> telling our but right who we are. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I don't think it, it not, not only from that aspect. I mean, in terms of it, it dents the credibility of, of us as a region, in terms mm -hmm. of if we sell our citizenship. Not to say that there aren't other countries that, that you know, have the same program internationally. But I don't know if you all saw the Al Jazeera um, documentary that, I think it was Al Jazeera that did it um, with Dominica when they investigated um, the citizenship yeah. investment yeah. program. Yeah. So, I mean, yes. something like that can, can dent the credibility of us as a region. Yes. Um, not to say that, okay, yes, we don't need the money, but as Milton said, if we look at other ways in unifying the Caribbean beside um, a pro uh, program like that, you know, it will make us be stronger. And Milton, I agree with you in the sense that we need to work together as one region because we have to be honest. Certain yeah. countries like to flex their weight <laughs> and flex their size and flex their economies and say, well, we have this, so hmm. we're the ones that should be in charge. Or because of size, you know, we're the ones that should be in charge. And yeah. sometimes our politicians and our populations tend to have egos that are bigger than what they really are. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And one of the things that I was impressed by, and these are for the Bajan guys here. I mean, your prime minister has really taken to her role as um, yeah. chairman of, chairperson of CARICOM um, within this last time, particularly dealing with this pandemic, maybe. God put her, make her rotation to be chairperson of CARICOM for this time because mm. she recently did an interview with CNN and mm. she was asked about yeah, Barbados' mm. position um, in handling the pandemic. And she said, yes, she's mm. prime minister of Barbados, but she's the chairperson of CARICOM. And she spoke on behalf of what is affecting all of CARICOM, not just Barbados alone. And this is something... Mm that we need to have more leaders think about, not be mm -hmm. um, isolated and insular and saying, well, I need to have these measures just for my country because at the end mm -hmm. of the day, whether we like to think about or not, what happens to one affects the other one. Yeah. Um, so, for example, and I can talk about it from a cricketing perspective. So, say, for example, we can't have cricket as yet, right? However, if it is St. Lucia opens up their country to international travel, but several of the other islands don't um, open it up. Yes, St. Lucia might have one venue. St. Lucia also only has one international cricket venue. So you can't have an international series in one country with one 
with one ground. True. And you can't even really call the stadium we have the uh, international standard. Yeah. <laughs> that's another that's another topic for another time. That's a debatable topic. Jordan Naz will not be drawn into that one. That's correct. That's correct. That, that is above my that's above my pay grade and above my oh, function. I can, but, I can see it. It's, it's yeah, no over. It's yeah. No, over. <laughs> no but and the, and I mean, you know, there's yeah. another thing. So like for example, if you had World Cup qualifiers yeah. And several mm-hmm. countries had to participate and play each other, right? Um, you can't mm-hmm. have it all they in can't. one country to ruin mm-hmm. one pitch. That would be a disadvantage for the second yeah, team right. that has to play or the third team that has to play. So it comes into that 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 point that Milton was making about the unity because mm-hmm. it is they always say more hands get the job done faster than if it is one person mm-hmm. building a house. Mm. So I think that's the approach that we need to take forward that you know, we need to be in this together yeah. rather than isolated and say, well, my country, you fix your country. No, I It agree. don't work that way. I agree. And Antigua is the example because we don't get food. If we don't get food from the other islands, how we're going to survive sometimes. I agree. But <laughs> you, know, guys, you, know, you know, guys, um, this sort of attitude and approach ought to be done at a national level. So when, it's, when, when each leader encourages his people, to think in that particular way. Look out for your neighbors. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We can understand the how that can mul- mul- multiply and have a significant regional impact. So mm-hmm. you know um, yeah. that these are things that we need to instill in our people at a local mm-hmm. level, and even in the educational yeah. system, yes. we need to yes. we need to put those things inside there. Mm-hmm. Those, yeah. those values, those values, and, and we have examples. Of how we can look out, look out for each other in the region, we you know. So yeah. let us not um, try to invent things. These things are there for us to go forward on, rationalize it, understand it, apply it, mm-hmm. and I'm sure we're going to see the better, be the better for it in time to come, in years to come. Mm-hmm. Completely agree. Well, yeah. well, as we as we wrap up, if he. You know, I came and might bring this one to you actually, and I think we talk about mm. it a little bit now. Word of advice: what, what would you say? What would you leave people with? Or a thought that you think that you can offer as we deal and come out to the other end of COVID nineteen or coronavirus for the Caribbean? And you put me first. Um, yeah, put you first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think. I mean, I'll give a a, a quick backdrop and, and wrap it up. Um, I think people should really reflect um, over the time that we've spent and really try to work on issues around accountability and transparency, specifically around the most disadvantaged. Because I think, um, as an example, so yesterday, um, 170,000 people in St. Lucia woke up to stories on the Instagram around a baby being found in Mm. in a dumps bin uh, and in a shopping bag. Uh, yeah, luckily, right. the child was of good health, brought to the hospital. Um, but it speaks to the issues that we're facing, that um, a family, a husband and a wife, or a, a boy and a girl, can't raise a child. Apparently, she was denied um, entry into the hospital because she was de- it was demanded that she pay $1,000. So my point being is that um, Based on the issues and the challenges that have been exposed, I think everyone should try and champion our ability to be able to live and work freely. And what does it really mean to be happy? Does it mean ordering on Amazon? Does it mean having a garden and being self-sustaining? Like, I think we really, people need to really have at least probably take one thing that you did during COVID that you've never done before and try to bring it forward to be a more empathetic, mm. uh, unifying quality, something because the, I, I don't think the economies and the environment and the societies that we're, we were building um, is the best direction. A consuming society is not the direction we need to go in. And mm-hmm. I think people should be, take one thing, just take one thing, whether it's planting in the back of your garden or it mm-hmm. might be ordering all your fruits and produce from a local um, you know, producer rather than buying it in the, in the supermarket. It's something I will do. Like, I have a list now of like my egg person. I know where to get all my fruits from one person. And, and 
rather than buying it in the supermarket. If I need something from the supermarket, I know what I'm going to get. So all my local produce, I have my list because of COVID and I've had to find those persons. So I'm mm -hmm. going to stick to that. And I think That's people should yeah. look at a way of keeping one quality of thing that you did because of COVID and see where you go from there. I hope that that was positive enough. <laughs> no, that's good. Milton, what about you? Naz, we'll leave you to wrap it up. But Milton, what about you? Yes. Um, I believe that notwithstanding the fact that we need to look at those um, areas in terms of what we need to do to sustain ourselves. But I also believe, because it's an issue of transparency and accountability, citizens all over the region, each island, should be putting itself in a position where they can be like watchdogs, advocates, mm -hmm. monitor these things that are happening. Um, accountability has not been one of our favorite words in times past. <laughs> um, now we have, we have an opportunity to practice it. So let's, as citizens, we're not leaders, as <laughs> citizens, let us in our villages, in our communities, um, get get high on monitoring and assessment. Um, yeah, and let us also because they have to be held accountable. You know, they have to be held accountable um, wow. for all the things. And so wow. I'm saying to us as Caribbean citizens, let us put ourselves in a position. Um, be, Get, get the awareness, get training in, in advocacy, empower yourself so that we can stand because not only hunger, we are, we are going to fight after COVID, you know. Um, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are to continue to fight ignorance. Wow. We are to continue to fight ignorance. Um, mm. Lack of knowledge, I mean. Mm. Lack of knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. And, we can, and we see what lack of knowledge can do. Yeah. I've been doing so I'm just saying that to my Caribbean people, brothers and sisters, let us, let us, and, 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 anybody, and, and everyone, let us take that conscious approach to prepare ourselves. Mm -hmm. There's nothing we can do. We have to go forward, but let us give ourselves that task mm -hmm. to hold our leaders accountable in yeah. what they do, what they say, and what they practice. Yes, yeah. wow. wow, excellent. Thank you for that. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Yourself, bring us home. Any advice that's for the, the region? That, that's the politician in the group here. He can see <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my brothers and sisters. <laughs> yeah. We still have a question <laughs> mark by you. Don't worry. We still have that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll admit something to you. Though. I grew up in a family that, of politicians um, in Trinidad. So it's All something right. that, you know, you just have, mm. I guess, naturally. And you're involved mm. in. But um, mm. no, it comes back to my point that I said at the start of this conversation was that we need to look at other avenues of restructuring our economies in the Caribbean mm -hmm. um, in the sense that the biggest impact we've all had and the majority of the Caribbean depends on um, tourism for their income um, and their national economies and it's something that I think we need to to look to diversify from um, as I mentioned agriculture and the digital economy are probably two of the biggest ones that we need to look at mm. going forward mm -hmm. and as Philip mentioned earlier education plays a big part in it um, education agriculture I think should not just be a filler in the curriculum in the Caribbean because mm -hmm. I can tell you as someone as old as I am and someone who works by a desk on, on the digital economy most of the time, I had to ask my friends how to plant a seedling. I mean, even though I did it way back in primary school and in agriculture <laughs> in high school, I couldn't remember how to do it because it's something that I never took seriously. I took it for granted and I would admit that. But it's something that we need to change. We need to tell people more about who we are as a Caribbean and yes, we need to learn about Columbus and whatever it is, but we need to let we need to teach ourselves our own identity and who we are as a Caribbean. Because going forward, for us to have any voice in this world, um, going forward and not be overrun by superpowers, we need to show that we have a unifying voice in terms of we can stand on our own two feet mm -hmm. if we're faced with 
such a pandemic or such a disaster again because for example if a hurricane comes god forbids and we can't import food in the caribbean because a lot of a lot of nations import food so it's something that we need to look at going forward in terms of diversification of our um, economies and it's something as milton said is a unifying factor that we have to get within all um territories in the caribbean and see who who's best at what they do and then use that going forward to you know help us grow and help us to learn from what we've experienced in this pandemic and as akim said you know we need to be transparent because people need to put their egos mm -hmm. um lower than what That's the right. focus is because if you're elected by a people to serve for a purpose and with i mean with a vision for your people in your country mm -hmm. that needs to be at the forefront not what you think personally should yeah. happen yeah. so going Trinidad forward i think going to share that, carnival <laughs> I we've already shared carnival, we've but, already but, shared but, carnival because <laughs> some of your designers for St. Lucia Carnival are Trinidadians. So oh. <laughs> all, all. <laughs> you walked exactly. into that, Akeem. <laughs> so, <laughs> head, head and, first. <laughs> and the thing the thing about it is like as Akeem mentioned, Carnival, Trinidadians are fiercely protective of Carnival. Mm -hmm. But it's something mm -hmm. that we need as a, as, a, as, a, as a region, soccer is, you know, probably a melting pot of, of all, because you have producers from Barbados will be producing for Marshall or Kess mm -hmm. or whoever it is. And, and same thing for St. Lucians. Like, mm -hmm. I know um, Tedison John's publicist mm -hmm. is a Trini, right? So, I mean, we're all our neighbor's keeper. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we need to strengthen and, and, and improve on because what we have so far is a starting point, but it's something that we need to improve on and, you know, bolster going forward and take into consideration everything that we've learned from this pandemic and, yeah. got, you know, I mean, hurricane season coming up just now. Yeah. So it's something that we have to keep at the forefront of our mind and, Probably have to implement, God forbid, some of the things that we Agreed. did during this COVID um, to survive the hurricane season in the event that there's anything already. serious. Did you know that, Naz? Yeah, yeah. Um, the Arthur first up storm north. Has, yeah. yeah. The first mm -hmm. storm has been named. So a month yeah. in advance of, mm. of yeah. when the season normally starts. Yeah. So. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Okay. Something I've been thinking there is that on one hand, we're talking about, you know, the regional collaboration and integration. But still, we're talking about self-sustainability, right? So it feels as though we need to get get the balance of of looking inwards and ensuring that you are self-sustainable, um, mm -hmm. digitally, agriculturally, mm -hmm. as and from an education perspective. Mm -hmm. But it's then how do you clean up your house so that you can welcome people <coughs> in as well? Yeah, so true. Yeah. Yeah. I think the final thought for me would be: I I, I long believe that a lot of the things that we need to see are potentially not going to happen in our own generation. But I, I think what, where we have failed as a people in the Caribbean is for somebody to try and start and sustain it into the next generation. So I, mm -hmm. I might not see the benefit of what we are trying to do. I might not see that child who is able to, you know, I want to be an athlete, so I'm going to go to Jamaica, or I want to learn how to build houses, I'm going to go to Guyana. I might not see that in my lifetime. But I think we owe it to ourselves as people to start putting the right framework and foundation in place so that yeah. those things can happen even after we have gone. And that is where I think a lot of the failure lies. We, we try to see too much success in our lifetime. And the Caribbean mm -hmm. isn't a place where you can do that. You, have to, you almost have to sacrifice yourself and mm -hmm. recognize that the benefit will come further down the line. And it, it will evolve, but it might not evolve in your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100% agree with that. Well, guys, yep. this has been a fantastic conversation. All that's left is to yeah. say thank you, really. Thank you for joining us thank in the you. living room. It's been great having you, having you here and just yeah. moving on Thanks the conversation, really. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having yeah. us, man. Yeah, and it's anytime. not about, so beach time. You, yeah, you yeah. Get to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Milton. Enjoy thank you for joining us. Nice. Thanks, Akim. Thanks, Naz. Yeah. Send us a picture yes, of the I beach. It. Thanks. Yes. I will. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Take care. See you. Bye. Yes. Fantastic conversation, guys. Yeah. Wow. Yeah.
Yeah, so much to, to, lot to chew. Oh yeah, oh yeah, so much, so Mentally much to learn there. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot, lot there. I mean, I think one of the, the things that really stuck with me as well was just the passion for integration and the passion for yeah. a closer union so to speak, to solve some of the issues yeah. that we're yeah. all having across the region. And I think yeah. that passion coming from the ground swell of people hopefully transcends and gets beyond the political uh, class as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, you know, those, those guys have got their, their fingers on the pulse, clearly. You know, I, yeah. I, I, I like the, 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 the point that Akin brought about, look, there are strands of unity around the Caribbean in different ways, you know, sports, mm -hmm. religion, creative. These mm -hmm. are the things that we coalesce around. And, yeah. and he's right. But we, we just don't seem to have um, crap. What is the best way for us to sustain a unity? And I think mm -hmm. Milton's point about being genuinely united, you know, he's very passionate about this, you can tell. And yeah. this, this is an area that the Caribbean is really going to have to try. And, and we as a people are going to really have to try to put yeah. our efforts into if we're going to see change in the next generation. Yeah, his points on transparency and accountability Ooh. are also Ooh. well, yeah. well placed as well. And knowledge, yeah. the, that was quite a, quite a key one. Because um, even for myself, I, I would see growing up, there are loads of areas of knowledge that I wish I had really yeah. spent some time with, mm. um, as opposed to just the, the more academic, academic stuff. Because mm. yeah. um, that does bring a lot of benefit. I think there's really a need to start encouraging people in the Caribbean and kids and adults as well yeah. to look a bit further. Yeah. And perhaps the one, the one area that we didn't touch on, we, I think we, we, we talked about it, but we should probably have talked about CXC as an entity and the role that it has to play in, in bringing a core curriculum for people in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Because I feel as though I learned more about the Nina de Pinta and the Santa Maria, as you can tell, because I keep repeating them, than, <laughs> than, than, than anything else to do with um, Caribbean people, yeah. you know? And yeah. we, we, we were fortunate in some ways that we traveled across the Caribbean when we were younger. And, and yeah. that is how we learned a lot about, you know, how Caribbean territories function. But mm -hmm. it needs to be enshrined more into the curriculum. Yeah, no, I completely agree with that. Because, I mean, you keep repeating what, what you remember, but I would be surprised <laughs> if there aren't a lot of kids or not even kids, adults, um, who is actually feeling very similar uh, who that's what they can remember learning about history as well in the Caribbean I think yeah. there's there's just so much to learn about not just um indigenous people or um that we can learn from across the region but what we can do together I think that's the I think that's the frustration I get when we think about learning history or learning geography or yeah. learning about agriculture I mean mm -hmm. I can yeah. bet you the agricultural curriculum is very localized to just thinking about plants and soils that's local to say Barbados, but not yeah. necessarily thinking about across the region and how you can take it further, how you can yeah. expand on it to grow an industry um, that's regionalized even before we think about sending it outside. I know everyone sends it outside to get foreign exchange and what's not, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's like how you can feed the region. And the region, like, I'm telling you, the region can feed itself. Mm -hmm. I, I know that yeah. without a doubt. I think sport, sport, coming back to sport, that is, that is probably a good example because there are things that you do together. You know, we do, we have the West Indies team, but it doesn't stop you from doing it individually. You know, you can still, you can still compete against each other and by competing against each other, help each other to, to yeah. grow and to get better at, at what you do and, and do the same things at the same time. You know, you would have your, your tournaments. Um, I think agriculture is really some something that we need to, to think about. Mm -hmm. Just just today, I uh, chopped up a sweet pepper and usually I would just take the sweet pepper and all the seeds and throw it. I say, you know what? Put it in the ground. Keep these seeds. Mm -hmm. And start start seeing if I can give myself the skill of planting planting seeds instead of wasting food. So I'm going to yeah, start why, that. why yeah. not? I think there's a perception of what you would lose. I think that's the thing that people need to get over of thinking that if we do something together, then therefore I'm losing something. As yeah. opposed to understanding, no, you're gaining something. And at mm -hmm. the same time, you can still do your individual thing that you were doing as well. Mm -hmm. But when you co-op, you can do an even bigger thing. And I think that's, the, that's probably the mentality that we need to change, that you're not losing, you're gaining. Okay. And yeah. really get that understanding to people. And I think it was Milton who was making the point about, well, who are we, you know, in terms of identity? Who, who are we as, as a people? 
And I think there, there's, a global, there's a global answer to that question in terms of who we are as a Caribbean people. But mm -hmm. there's also a local answer to that question in terms of who we are as, as an island. And that is where we, we tend to conflate the two things together and think mm -hmm. when we're talking identity, we're only talking about one thing. You know, mm -hmm. the, the Caribbean is a melting pot of a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And our, our strength is our identity, absolutely, at a macro level, but also at a micro level. Yeah, oh, yeah, I agree. Bananas, pineapples, and nutmeg. <laughs> <laughs> I have that on my mind. Yeah, there you go. That's so we, good. So we can come up with Phil. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we know you can make something with that, right? Oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, definitely. Hey, well, listen, everybody, thank you so much for joining us here in the living room. If you haven't already, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. So, you know, join us in one of those areas. But thank you once again for joining us. Until next time. Whew. Ah, Lord, that was a marathon, yeah? That was you, my <laughs> neck here, prick, and was hurting me, boy. <laughs> I tried.